Hello everyone and welcome to Knit Group. My name is Cody and in today's video we're actually going to knit for once. I know that's crazy but I prefer how this hat for the Among Us characters look. I like how it looks better knit. So we're going to knit this today and it's not some kind of groundbreaking tutorial or groundbreaking like pattern. It's just a really cutesy one. So this will fit on any of our Among Us characters as well as any of the baby Lunas. And it would also be cute as like a little mini hat that you can put on top of your Luna squishes as well. Just if you want to put it on one side and have it be a little tiny little hat, that would be adorable. So today's video, I'm going to be using some green yarn. I already made one red, but I had a customer request for a green version of this on one of my crewmates. I've been bombarded with requests for custom amigurumi for this Christmas. I put a little listing out there for my friends and family, and apparently everybody wants an Among Us character. So I've been doing that lately, and I'm trying really hard to maintain and continue on doing my tutorials because I have a bunch of cute stuff coming. I'm gonna post some pictures up here of the cute little Santa hat that I'm making, as well as the gnome and the gnome version which is going to turn into a Santa. So I'm going to be doing some tutorials around those. I'm going to do a Santa hat, then a gnome body, and then how to turn the gnome body into a little Santa as well. I'm really excited, especially with how this cute little snowman turned out. I'm so happy with all my little Christmas crochet amigurumi this season, but uh, let's go ahead and get started on this. I can go ranting forever. For this, I'm going to be using some size four clover number sevens 4.5 i'm gonna put some links down below so if you want to get these specific ones you can they'll be linked down below you can use any kind of number sevens um i was originally doing it with some metal ones but i found that with how small the hat is and how i only have 12 12 and 8 stitches on any of these pieces here it's easier to lose your stitches if you're using metal because they'll slide right off quicker to work with because your needles and your stitches, everything slides right off, but also complicated when you have so few stitches and you don't want to lose your stitches. So I'm using wood because it is a bit stickier. So we're using wood. You're also going to need a darning needle and I am using, I love this cotton in, I believe this is like Kerry Golder. I believe this is in Kelly Green, I think. So something like that. I'm just using a green worsted weight yarn. All right, for this, you're going to want to be comfortable with working in the round, doing some knitting, as well as purling, and how to do the whole cast on method. I have a link down below, which explains how to do all those stitches in case you don't know how to do them. And I'm going to try to go slow enough so that you can actually tell what I'm doing, basically. All right, so I'm going to be using a long tail cast on method. A long tail cast on method, again, linked down below, is when you use your tail to cast on and basically knit your first row. We are going to be doing that. We're going to be casting on 32 stitches. You're going to want to create a very long tail. I'm bouncing and I don't know why. You're going to want to create a nice long tail for your long tail cast on method. Typically three to four times the length of what your brim will be basically. So whatever that is in diameter, multiply that by three and you'll get how long of a tail you need. I kind of always just guess it and just throw a bunch of extra on the side there. I can always use my extra long tail for sewing if I need to. And we're going to be casting on 32 stitches. The way that I do that is we're going to cast on 12 on this first needle. So I'm going to put on my slip knot. I've made a slip knot. I guess I should clarify that. There you go. We make a slip knot. That counts as my first stitch, essentially. I'm gonna put that right on my hook. And then I'm gonna take my hand and I'm going to start the long tail cast on method where I wrap it around my thumb and then I go up through it and pick up my active yarn. This is my tail, this is my active. We're gonna pull that through. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. All right, so we have 12 stitches. We're going to put that into the center of our needle. I'm going to put my tail over here. There we go. That way it's a little bit easier. We're going to take our next needle and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to try to keep this as close to the other stitches as we can and we're going to put on 12 stitches like so try to make it so it's not so like tight that it's gonna hurt your join but it'll be fine 
two, three, four, five, six, seven. E. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Again, we're going to kind of slide those so that they're in the middle of your needles. We're going to pick up our third double pointed and we're going to put eight. We have 12 and 12, which is 24, and we want to eventually get down to move this this way. There we go. Get well, not down to, we're going to get up to 32. So we need eight more stitches. And I like to split them up so that they are in uh, repetitions of four, basically. So the 12 and the 12, and I'm going to do eight more on this little needle here. So we're going to again. Go over, try to get it as close as we can. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And again, if you get confused at any point in time, we will have a printable PDF down below. Be sure to get the free coupon code for that. It is down below. You want to make sure that everything is facing the right way. So all of your stitches are going the same way. We're going to go then and flip over to our other side. And here we're going to do 10 rounds of knit to purl two the entire way around. All right, so I was clanking my needles too much on the base of the table and I had to change my camera angle. Basically, what you're going to do next to work in the round is we're going to knit two and purl two the entire way around. So essentially, we're going to knit one and then two and then purl two, one, and two. Then you're going to knit two and purl two. And we're going to keep doing this all the way around until we've gone around for 10 rounds. I know it seems like a lot, but we're going to fold our brim, which is what brings it down a lot. So again, let's knit two, one, two, purl two, one, Two. And now we put that back into the center of the middle. We go on to our next needle. Try not to wrap things around too badly. And we're just going to keep doing this all the way around until it is basically, if you want your brim shorter or you want it longer, you can minimize how many rows around you do, but I think 10 is the perfect number. Oh, and if you're curious about how I'm knitting, this is called the European style versus American style. This is when it's you're plucking it versus when you're taking it with your other hand. I, I can't do it comfortably with the other way, but basically you would go put your hand, put your thing through your work and then you'd wrap it. I don't do it that way because, well, again, I am dyslexic and I learned the wrong way. So I <laughs> kept on trying to figure out how to hold my yarn and found out that it actually had a name. So purl two, and then you just keep going around and around and around until you get it to the length that you want. So I'll be right back as soon as my brim is knit and I'll show you how we do the knitting and then how we do the decreasing. It's pretty quick. Be right back as soon as that's done. And if you get confused at any point in time, again, I have a written PDF for this down below so you can get that for free for the very first week. And just be sure to get that and to say subscribed to us so that you can be in the know when we post new videos and you can get the coupon codes for all the patterns that we put out there. All right, be right back. Okay, so now that you've gone around for your 10 rounds of ribbing, you're going to want to go around for about an inch and a half. I end up doing it for about seven rounds of just knitting in the round. And the way that I do that, I actually have a tip for when I get around to my corners. I'm going to pick up and kind of on the corners here as you join, I kind of tug it a little bit. That way my little joins between my um, needles can look nice and um, have less of a pull to them basically. So I'll show that again as soon as I get to the end we're just knitting around. It's super duper easy and I do it for about an inch and a half 
And for me, that's between rows 9 through 15. That's my tensioning though. So I kind of just wiggle it at the end, turn, make sure that my yarn is pulled. And then I hold my yarn a bit tighter than I would usually, go in, wrap, and then as soon as I'm on there, I pull it so that it's nice and taut. And I'm going to keep doing that until I reach the seven rounds or the inch and a half. And I'll be back when I can show you the more complicated part, which is the decreasing. But again, it's still not that bad at all. So be right back as soon as that is all done. Okay, so we have now reached the more complicated part of the hat, which is the decreasing, basically. I'm going to keep this unfolded for right now because it makes it easier. I don't know, it feels lighter. I know that that's not completely rational, but it's what I'm doing. So here we're going to start our decreases. We're going to knit six and then knit two together. And I'll show that right here. One, kind of tighten it. Two, three, four, five, six, knit these two stitches, putting your needle through both of them, like so, knit two together, and it kind of just pops out like that. So then one, two, three, four, go to your next needle, five, six, decrease, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then decrease. And then on your last needle, it will be actually evenly spread out. So you just knit six and knit two together. You basically did four repetitions, decreasing four stitches and that brings you from 32 down to 28. Six, and then decrease. I like to knit through the, just knit two together instead of like doing any kind of slip slip knit or anything like that. I don't mind which direction it goes in and a knit two together is the easiest way to decrease those two together. But if you want your swirl going the other way, you can easily do a slip slip knit. All right, so now that we are on our next row, we are going to knit five and then decrease one, two, three, four, five, and then decrease. What you could also do is if you get frustrated with these just being here, you could move them over. I might actually just do that real quick as I'm doing it. <laughs> two, three, four. Okay. So now I have even numbers there, and this is just going to be my biggest needle. So again, we're going to knit five, one, two, three, four, five, and then knit two together. Knit five, one, two, three, four, five, and then knit two together going to be a little bit tight on here. I actually, you know what? I'm going to get another needle out and put those stitches right there onto this needle just to make it a little bit less stretched. So we're going to go one. I should have five stitches. Oh no, six stitches. Two, three, four, five, six. And then I have six on this needle. And now I have this last repetition for that round, I believe. So we're going to knit five, one, two, three, four, five, and then I'm gonna knit two together. And now we are at the beginning of our next round. And I'm keeping track, uh, as you can see, with the little uh, sidebar down here of what row number we're doing and what exactly it is. We're going to knit four and decrease. We're essentially decreasing. Our last round we went from 28 to 24, so now we have 24 stitches and now we're going to go from 24 down to 20. We're decreasing four stitches every single time and just kind of going down that way. And we're going to knit two together after knitting four. So now we have five stitches on that needle. 
Again, we're going to do that. So one, two, three, four, and decrease. Put those two stitches together. We need to do two more times. One, two, three, four, and decrease. One, it gets harder to show as it goes along. Two, three, four, and decrease. And now we are on our next round. We are going to go knit three and decrease. We're essentially taking one less stitch off each time because we've already decreased it basically. One, two, three, and then knit two together. We're gonna keep doing this until we get down to eight stitches basically. And then I'll show you what we do when we only have eight stitches. So when we get down to two stitches per needle, then you're done. One, two, three, so we're almost there. We're getting real close. Oh no. Oh no. I split my yarn. Instead of picking up that stitch properly. There we go. Let's fix that. One, two, three, four. And one, two, three. And decrease. And this is our last decrease. And then we will have 16 stitches at the end of this row, going from 20 down to 16. And now we're going to go onto our next row and go from 16 down to four. And so we're going to knit two because we only have four stitches left on this needle. This is why having wooden needles is very important because when I had metal needles doing this, they were sliding all over the place and it was so hard to keep them on. So normally I'd go for metal needles because I like it when my needles, when my stitches can slide off my needles really quickly. But in this instance, it made it so that it was harder to maintain it and manage it. So I didn't want to do that. One, two, and then decrease. The wood has a certain stickiness to it. And that's why I actually bought these needles new. One, two because it hasn't they have not absorbed the oils from my fingers yet so they're not as slick a lot of people prefer wooden needles i am not one of those people but i can understand it one two and decrease all righty and so now we're back and going on to our next row and this is our final decrease round we're going to knit one and decrease the entire way around and we're going to try to keep it a little bit tight in our tensioning just to make it so that there's no real gaps and holes one decrease one decrease one kind of pull it a little bit there you go e decrease and here goes our last one for this round so one and decrease all right so here as soon as I get this decrease done so here we have just I want to put this down eight stitches left on our work and what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to pull our tail through those final stitches essentially need to find a darning needle. Oh no, no, there it is. So here we're going to cut a nice long tail because I'm going to be hiding my tails doing that. And we're going to take our darning needle and put it on. And what I like to do is I like to go take my yarn underneath and go through the very first needle that I have. And I'm not going to take it off quite yet. I'm going to go in and through, go to the next Go in and through, go to the next, in and through, and then the last one, in 
and underneath both those stitches and through. So I'm gonna do that one more time though. So I'm gonna go in on the first one again, the second one again, and again on the third, and again on the fourth. So now that I've done that though, I can literally take all of these out. Just set them over here and call it good. Okay, that looks awful, but I'm gonna take, it's open, so don't close it quite yet. We're not gonna cinch it. We're gonna take our darning needle and go through the center, like so, and then kind of gently tug on it until it is closed. Kind of wiggle, kind of do that. Pull on our tail, make it nice and tight, and that is pretty much how you close up your top. And so here, I'm gonna flip my work inside out and I'm gonna actually sew my tails but I'm gonna change my camera angle while I do that. All right so now I'm back with a better camera angle and what I'm going to do is take my darning needle and my tail it fell off so I'm putting it back on and I'm going to take it and I'm going to start working my tail through the back ridges of my pearls and the way that I do that is I'm gonna go through this right here then I'm gonna bypass the secondary one and I'm gonna go underneath that one. Bypass, go under, up and over, up and over, like so. So I'm skipping a pearl ridge every time and I'm gonna go like that. And then I'm gonna go back up the side, do the same thing, skip, go under, skip, go under, skip, go under. And pull that through. I could call that done, but I'm also going to do it again. Up and over, up and over, up and over. And I like to go one more past what I did before. And so I've got it nice and weaved in and it's not going to come undone. I'm going to do the same thing for my side here. I've got this tail just hanging out here. We're going to go up on the opposite side though. So Realize how you're going to be flipping your rim and go on the inset of that rim. So I'm actually going to be going up the side here just to make sure that it's nice and hidden. I'm going to go through my original slip stitch ridge right here. Kind of pull it up like so. And then I'm going to go back underneath and then I'm going to go up my ridging like so. Because I'm going to be flipping this like this, I'd rather hide it on the out, what seems like it would be the outside. So I'm actually going to go through back and forth on the sides of that first knit row, the first side of the V basically. And I'm going to go back down the other side too. So I'll show you how that looks as soon as I get all the way up here. I'm pretty close to where it would be visible, so I'm going to go across like so and hide it that way. So I'm just going to keep going, and it's not super duper visible even if it was to show, but I like that this is just going to be flipped down on itself and you can't even see it. And I'm going to keep going just back and forth like so. So I'm going to stop there just shy of where the brim would be, and I'm going to cut that one. I hide my tails a lot more than other people do because it drives me crazy to have my tails unravel. I've had that happen one too many times. So now I'm gonna take my brim and I'm just gonna flip it like so for as tall as I want it. And that actually I think turned out better than my original one that I made. So I'm pretty happy with how that turned out. And I think that is the trick. I used metal needles with this, which messed with my tensioning because I kept on having to play with my needles. So this actually came out a lot better than that one did. So this is how that turned out. And I'm pretty excited with how it looks. It's super cute. And I'm hoping that it helped out somebody who wanted to make one of these for their friends or family for Christmas. A lot of people are sending me stuff on Instagram about how they're making a lot of these on their um, Christmas lists and for their family members. And I love that. I love seeing things on Instagram that people link to me. It's so much fun to see what people are
are doing. They make their own hats. They make the hats from the Among Us tutorial playlist, which again will be linked down below. In my next video, again, I'm going to be working on a Santa hat and working on more Christmassy things, but do let me know if there are other hats that you would like to see, if you would like to see a crochet version of this hat. I just like when I'm making clothing, I tend to knit them a lot more than uh, anything else. One of my favorite things to do is to crochet an amigurumi doll and then knit clothing for it. I see that a lot on the like Russian side of Pinterest, not to sound like weird, but I've gone down some rabbit holes and it's always in Russian when I see the really cool crochet dolls that have the knit clothing and it's so it's immaculate it's amazing what people can do and i'm in love with that so i kind of wanted to do something like that so let me know what you guys think if you want the written pattern for this again get that while you can down below it's on ravelry and there will be a free coupon code for that down below be sure to head over to our patreon if you want to help support the channel over there it is much appreciated these are my patrons. I adore them. They help keep the channel going. It's so nice that they can help out that way. Thanks again for watching and be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the little bell before you leave if you want to see more videos like this. And until next time, guys, bye!